Are you proud to be Hispanic? Hispanics in Florida now have the first Hispanic car license plate in the United States. Be a proud Hispanic. Put the Hispanic plate on your car. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a scientist. I want to be an engineer. I want to be a police officer. I want to be a professional dancer. By getting the Hispanic plate for your car, you will support scholarships and community programs. The Hispanic plate is available at any Department of Motor Vehicle office. Call now at 321-277-0850 or visit hispanicachievers.org. Get ready for Latina, like it or not. So that was not the first affair. There was three more. Saw that I went after her and I beat her up where she got into the car and wouldn't come out. Are you naked? Yeah. You know, getting all sexy and, you know, getting my groove on. He actually got the fist and just popped me in the face. So tune in every Tuesday. We're going to be here bringing it like it is from 10 to 10.30. Hi, I'm Danny Ramos, and welcome to this week's edition of Hispanic Speak Out TV, brought to you on Bright House Cable for the past 14 years. We address political issues and community issues that are important to the Hispanic community and that affect all communities of Central Florida. My guest here tonight is Senator David Simmons. Hi, David. How are you? How welcome are you to Hispanic Speak Out. Yes. How are you? Mucho gusto. Good. And you're, you're a fluid Spanish speaker. Well, I'm certainly conversational. Good, good. Um, Let's talk about education here. Uh, education is a big issue for Hispanics. What's going on for the community with education? What's new? Well, the important thing that I've been dealing with, that I've been the champion of, and uh, you may have seen it, uh, there was an article in the Orlando Sentinel just this uh, last Sunday in which uh, they talk about uh, uh, what I'm doing, and that is pushing for the extra hour a day for those low performing schools. Many of them are minorities and certainly all of them mm -hmm. are children who are at risk, who are in poverty. And these children need an extra boost, an extra hour a day of intensive reading instruction. And I've gotten it set up. I've pushed uh, through the legislature with my uh, colleagues a uh, system by which to take the 300 lowest performing elementary schools in the mm -hmm. state of Florida and uh, require that uh, all of those students go an extra hour a day. Is that a Hispanic issue because of the language barrier or, or is that uh, an issue across the board? It's across the board, but the fact of it is for those children who come here who have uh, some language other than English as their primary language, obviously they have a tougher, tougher time being able to, uh, to deal with uh, you know, being taught in English. Mm -hmm. And so, obviously, uh, for Hispanics, it's incredibly important that they have this extra hour a day of reading instruction. Have you gotten any playback, any backlash from the parents or, or from the other side? You know, another hour, I gotta go another hour to school. I mean, I don't know what levels. What age levels does that involve? This is gonna be elementary. It is already elementary school. So okay. it's, uh, it's just the first few years of, uh, of okay. school. All right, so they, they'll go along with the program. It's not well, like high school well, where they're going to go. Uh, they won't show up or they'll cut out. <laughs> <laughs> well, believe it or not, uh, that uh, when it's been uh, those children who are doing this, I mean, the fact of it is is the results have been very, very dramatic. Mm -hmm. uh, when done right, when done right, uh, the studies have shown that this has a significant impact. These children can learn just like anyone else can learn. Mm -hmm. They're just as good as anyone else. They just need extra time sitting there learning how to read in English and learning how to understand in English. And the fact of it is is that, uh, yes, there are some children who complain, I'm sure, because they're children, and there are certain parents who complain. But the fact of it is is hard work is a necessary ingredient to success. And when people see the results, they say this is outstanding. Why is it that we have to do this now? Because when I was a kid, they didn't have any of these programs, and we had to learn English well, the, in order to get through. I mean, it was something that we had to do, it, and, and it was something that uh, in order to survive you had to do. And, and of course, you know, you've got to understand that, uh, that the culture has changed now. Mm -hmm. There are places in Florida where, you know, English isn't even spoken. And uh, you go to Miami, and, and the fact of it is is that we all need to learn two languages. We all should have three languages. And the fact of it is is that it's incredibly important for those children who come here with uh, Spanish as their primary language 
that they get that extra boost because our schools are taught in English. And so what happens is, is they need to have that special attention mm -hmm. so that they can, uh, and remember these are largely, uh, these are children in poverty too. They don't mm -hmm. have the same resources when they get home that, uh, that other children might have. Okay. How do you feel, uh, let's go on a national level. I know okay. you're a state center, but what's happening nationally affects us economically on a local level. How do you feel about this border crisis situation? What, what, how do you see it from your point of view? I see it as one in which uh, you know, we can say that it's a crisis with no options, but the truth of it is, is this is a, a real opportunity to solve a problem. This is the opportunity that we can go ahead and we need to understand that we've got to seal our borders, but we need to deal justly and reasonably with the people who are already here. Okay. I noticed that um, there was a procurement put out last January for transportation for 65,000 kids for May on the border, and that was on the, on the government website. So there was, this was in the works, and some people are saying it was part, was approved by the government, and the government in Washington actually attracted these kids to come in and, uh, beforehand, that it wasn't a surprise they just turned up. Plus, they got to go through Mexico. And Mexico has very strong uh, immigration policy to their country. So these kids came through Mexico with permission of the Mexican government. Well, I mean, we need to deal with, you know, it is no solution to ignore a problem. We need to deal with this. We need to deal with it justly and appropriately. The Florida legislature this uh, last spring dealt with the issue of uh, 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 non-documented, undocumented mm -hmm. uh, children who uh, are being charged, uh, you know, out-of-state tuition. And we went ahead and, and changed it so that there would be in-state tuition for children who have gone three years to high school here in the state of Florida because it's unfair to them. Remember, children, children yeah. who come here, they didn't, it wasn't their choice, it wasn't their decision, and, uh, and so it's important that we treat them fairly and justly mm -hmm. and not uh, go ahead and uh, charge them out-of-state tuition. And the same thing is true, for example, with respect to uh, uh, you know, a, a young man who, whose name is, uh, is Mr. Godinez. Uh, he was uh, uh, an individual who was, uh, went to high school here in uh, the Tampa area, in, in Florida, in the Tampa area. He, was uh, the valedictorian of his class. He was an Eagle Scout. He uh, went to Florida State uh, Law School. He uh, graduated, and then he was not permitted to. I, uh, that was my next question. You beat me to it. Yeah. Yeah. That's. A, tell us a little bit more about th that law that was passed. Well, what happened is, is that uh, 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 Jose Godinez uh, was uh, was an individual who had done everything that you and I, as Americans, want someone to do and that is to, in fact, do well, mm -hmm. do real well, uh, to work hard, to succeed. And, uh, and he was uh, not given the opportunity uh, to, uh, even though he took the Florida bar exam, uh, he took the, uh, uh, he graduated from Florida State uh, Law School, uh, even had received several awards for doing the best in the class uh, on those in certain courses. But uh, there's a federal law that says that a state cannot give any kind of license or permission or anything to a person who is undocumented uh, without the state legislature permitting it. Well, since the courts are in the admission to the Florida bar is uh, controlled by the Florida Supreme Court, and that's not a, that, they're not the legislature and they're not passing a statute, they said that they couldn't the Florida Supreme Court said that they couldn't let this young man in, even though they wanted to, as a matter of fact. But they said it was for the legislature to pass a statute that would permit him and those like him to be admitted to the Florida bar. Mm -hmm. And so I was one of the persons who pushed to assure that, uh, that a person like him, who is uh, innocent of any wrongdoing, who's done everything that he was supposed to do that you and I would expect him to do, that he be permitted to take the Florida bar and in fact be uh, admitted into the Florida bar. And that's what's happened. We did pass the statute, the governor signed, uh, signed it, and, uh, and he has been admitted to the Florida bar.
Now, was that groundbreaking for everybody of that kind of situation? Uh, here in the state of Florida, absolutely. So that has become a law for people yes. who are undocumented. They can become lawyers. That's right. If in That's fact so fantastic. They, if, in fact, they've gone to school and, and they, here, yeah. yeah, he had been here since he was nine years old. Okay. And so uh, we put uh, restrictions on it. We made sure that the person has to make his applications, uh, appropriate al applications to... Uh, everything that you would expect him to try to do to mm -hmm. become a citizen of, of the state of Florida and the citizen of the United States. Uh, and so, uh, yes, there were you know, certain restrictions that are fair restrictions. Mm -hmm. Here we said that he needed to be here for 10 years and mm -hmm. have been here for 10 years, gone to school here. And so uh, with these things, he was able to become a, uh, great. Uh, you know, a member that's, of the Florida Bar. That's really great. That's, that's something that's really worthwhile. Senator Simmons, it's such a pleasure. I'd like you to come yeah. back. If you can come back in, in two weeks again, because I know that there was other things that I wanted to talk to you about, which are very pertinent for our community. Okay? All right. So I would appreciate it if you can Love do to. that. Love okay? to, Danny. Okay, thank you All so right, much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll All be right. right back. Before I became a graphic designer, I thought I only needed to master the software. The computer can only do so much. But at Sanford Brown, Ms. McCarthy helped me develop my eye for design. She even shared her own professional experiences. The adventures of a real-life graphic designer. Prepare for your future career as a graphic designer at Sanford Brown College. Call 877-918-6444 now for your career builder career guide. That's 877-918-6444. We're in hard times and some of us are going to need a lawyer. And if you need a lawyer, don't just react to a TV commercial. Get a copy of the Lawyer's Consumer Directory, which is available absolutely free of charge at any 7-Eleven store throughout Central Florida. The Lawyer's Consumer Directory is going to give you real hardcore knowledge on how to hire a lawyer and a lot of information on issues like bankruptcy, foreclosure and more. Get the Lawyer's Consumer Directory. It's absolutely free of charge at any 7-Eleven throughout Central Florida. Hi, I'm Jose Miranda. This is Hispanic Speak Out. We're talking politics, and I have the, the lovely uh, next Lieutenant Governor, uh, Annette Tadeo. Si, and yes. uh, <laughs> thank you. Welcome. And, uh, thank you. And thank you for coming on the show. You've right. had a very busy schedule today. I heard you, had, uh, you went around to homes and had a roundtable discussion, speaking to regular people, as you would say. You know, um, we started what was called the um, kitchen table tour. Right because um, we see a lot of 30 second commercials, we see a lot of attacks, and uh, what we want to show, Charlie and I, is that when we talk about uh, the people that are hurting, mm -hmm. and uh, we wanted to show the face of some of those people and the examples. Okay. Uh, so we went to people's homes. Uh, today, for example, we went to the home uh, right here in Orlando of a dreamer, a dreamer who did everything right, um, followed the rules, and uh, got g really good grades, played football, okay. now I'm talking about American football, right. uh, and got all kinds of offers to go to universities because they liked the fact that he had good grades and could play football. Right. And yet um, uh, his status uh, didn't allow him to do so. And so um, it's really sad. And even <clears throat> when he finally found a university that he could go to, he had uh, to take a Greyhound bus because uh, obviously they sure. don't have driver's license. So just right. the reality of, <laughs> of living in that fear um, and so it was, it was sad, but there were, there were other instances of people being denied uh, medical care who are working people because we didn't expand Medicaid, $51 billion okay. uh, that we have left on the table. And that's $51 billion that we send to Washington. It's our money, okay. but we're not taking it back because of politics. And so those, well, are, those are some of the examples of the many people right. we saw. Well, speaking about, because you're leading into the, the immigration issue, and there seems to be such a controversy, and even among Hispanics, where Hispanics seem to be in a blame mode. You know, we're not getting this done, we're not getting that done uh, on the immigration issue. How, does, how will your administration be different than the previous administration that we're in now? Well, it'd be different because we actually would have a heart and we actually believe that we are strong because of our diversity. Right. And so uh, it's very different from someone who actually uh, ran on an Arizona-style immigration law and said that Florida needed to have that, and um, someone who also doesn't believe that dreamers should have driver's licenses. Okay. Uh, Rick Scott also doesn't believe that, um, that uh, 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 undocumented immigrants should have driver's licenses. Right. We believe that, you know, we shouldn't be afraid to talk about it, 
and we should realize that just because Washington is doing nothing about this very important issue right. doesn't mean that we in Florida aren't going to be aware that we have people in the shadows and, um, and they should be able to have a driver's license so that the rest of us, when we're driving on the road, um, don't have to worry about yeah. uninsured, uninsured motorists. Yeah, and, uh, and, and, and obviously our insurance would go down yeah. if we have less uninsured motorists, mm -hmm. and it'd be safer. So, I mean, just overall, it's just a totally different atti attitude uh, towards immigrants. Uh, and just the fact that Charlie picked me, uh, somebody who, who has been discriminated against, who's lived the American dream, right. uh, shows that he wants to make sure that we have a voice at the table and that we have opportunities. How do you address that issue, the voice at the table, when people feel that we're not addressing it and we're, we're, we had a former governor who, and Mr. Chris, who seemed to be on one side of one issue one minute and on the other side of the issue on the other, other minute, depending on who who's speaking about, about it? Uh, you know, uh, honestly, I don't think uh, Charlie uh, has changed. I think Charlie always was somebody who was, when he was a Republican, worked with Democrats and Republicans to put the people first, mm -hmm. to work uh, towards making sure that uh, we defended the people and that it was the people's government. And that's why he got the name, uh, the people's governor. It's not mm -hmm. a slogan. It's an actual name that he earned because people knew that he always defended the people, whether it was against raising the, uh, the, the utilities, uh, the utility bills, or raising our insurance on our homes. Right. He always fought the special interests okay. as a Republican. Now, um, the reason he became a Democrat is because the Republican bar Party has gone to the extreme Tea Party, uh, and uh, you can no longer be someone who wants to actually get stuff done and talk together. Right. And that's sad. Um, okay. And so, so I, I, I believe that uh, he hasn't changed. He's actually always been somebody who listens. Who and I'm so glad. I respect, that even if in the positions that he may have changed his position, I, I respect the man who is actually willing to admit, you know what, let me listen to this side. I, mm -hmm. I was and listening or aware of everything okay. and I think that's a good thing. I think so too. <laughs> so we're listening and we have uh, on the amendment uh, coming up about marijuana. Mm -hmm. um, there medical marijuana. Medical marijuana. <laughs> uh, although there are some people who say that this is just the, the framework to open it up to individual sales and stuff like that. What's your take on this? What's your administration going to be looking at? Well. It, first of all, uh, we believe that uh, we're going to vote for it, and the reason being because we believe that we need to be compassionate. And if uh, we have uh, a child, I have a daughter, and if my daughter were sick, God forbid, uh, she's not, but if she were sick, I would want a doctor to be able to give her whatever medicine is necessary to make her feel better. Okay. And I know that Charlie has a sister who has cancer and is suffering through the uh, process sure. of, uh, that, that is a horrible process, she right. has brain cancer. I mean, you want uh, a doctor to be able to make them feel better uh, rather than these very strong drugs that doctors can prescribe, okay. but they can't prescribe uh, just a medication to make someone be able to eat again or to get them to not feel like throwing up. What do you think when, when people are saying this is just an opening to something else? Are we, what we're strictly concerned with is the medical aspect yes, of it, is that right? absolutely. This is just medical marijuana for a doctor to be able to prescribe. Okay. And you know, uh, people who are, who are saying that, I'm saying then, then we shouldn't have doctors per prescribing Oxycontin, which is very dangerous. Right. <laughs> so, you know, I, I trust doctors and I trust that we are going to regulate it properly for them to give a prescription to okay. the people who need it. All right. um, Going back to this, the, your, your campaign, you have a, a, a counterpart on the other side. How do you feel about your counterpart and what's the difference between you? Well, the first thing about our, my counterpart is that I have uh, accepted the debate invitations that we have received. Okay. Uh, two of them, one in English, one in Spanish, and any others that I receive have said I, I will accept. I want to talk about the issues. I want to answer questions. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's important not to hide behind 30 second commercials of attacks okay. and to actually answer what will you do? What have you done and what will you do to make things better? Not just for those at the top, the rich and those well connected, but for everyone uh, at the middle class who's really feeling that you know we're, the government is not there to protect us but only to help those at the top. Well it would seem that it would seem by advertisement that 
you know, you, uh, on one side you have an uh, issue where the governor has denied, for example, the Medicaid money, okay? Absolutely. And we need to increase Medicaid because that allows other people to get in. So the rest of us are paying for, for it when they go to the emergency room. Right, and, and a lot of people feel that those people are taking advantage of us. Are they or? or the people who would qualify for Medicaid? Yeah. Well, these are working people. Okay. These are working people that cannot, don't make enough to uh, to buy insurance, to buy into the uh, insurance program. So I think, you know, it's 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 silly. It's it's mm. money that we're leaving on the table, just mm. like we left money on the table with the bullet train. Okay. We were offered bullet train money, and we, just, we just said no just because of politics. And instead, California got the train. Right, okay. Um, you have about 30 seconds. <laughs> How do we get those folks out there to come and hit that lever? Uh, well, we don't have a lever anymore, but, but having said that, that, we need everybody yeah. to vote. You can vote by mail. You can vote in, in person early or wait till Election Day. Yeah. I would say to, to anybody watching, uh, don't let other people make decisions for you. We have way too many special interests in Tallahassee and lobbyists, and us, the people, need to be back in charge, and that's what Charlie and I want to do for you. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you. The next Lieutenant Governor, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we'll be right back. I'm Jose Miranda. I've always had my own style. Yes, she definitely had style. But in fashion merchandising at Sanford Brown, I learned how to make it a career from industry professionals like Miss Cooper, who was really supportive. Textiles, design, marketing, we teach real fashion skills and the business of fashion. I wanted a career in fashion, and Sanford Brown helped make it possible. Get started on your future career in fashion at Sanford Brown College. Call 877-751-9111 now for your Career Builder Career Guide. That's 877-751-9111. Are you proud to be Hispanic? Hispanics in Florida now have the first Hispanic car license plate in the United States. Be a proud Hispanic. Put the Hispanic plate on your car. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a scientist. I want to be an engineer. I want to be a police officer. I want to be a professional dancer. By getting the Hispanic plate for your car, you will support scholarships and community programs. The Hispanic plate is available at any Department of Motor Vehicle office. Call now at 321-277-0850 or visit hispanicachievers.org. Welcome back. I'm Jose Miranda. This is Hispanic Speak Out. We've been on the air for 14 years on Bright House Channel 49 at 9.30 p.m. Uh, we're talking again politics because uh, we're good at that. And we're here with uh, Robert Garcia, who's running for Florida House of Representatives for District 27. Yes, sir. 27. How are you, man? I'm doing fine. Thank, Thank you, you for having me. me. Thank you for coming. Uh, what makes you different than your opponent, and what do you bring to the table? Well, because I place the people first. Okay, I've always had uh, my desire to serve. Okay, I don't allow politics to interfere my decisions. When the people elect me, they are my priority, my number one priority. Uh, in issues that we have right now, challenging ones. Okay, I believe that this legislator has not addressed them. They uh, they left this year not voting on certain things uh, like uh, wages, mm -hmm. increase of wages, uh, the women's rights issues, which are very important to me, uh, water issues, environmental issues. Uh, they sort of uh, took the easy way out. And what they did was, uh, to me, they gave a wrong impression or perception that they actually were tax cutters mm -hmm. and they were helping the average Floridian. I don't think they are. Okay. Well, tell me something. You are Latino, apparently, by the name of Garcia. So just in case somebody, somebody forgets that, are you Puerto Rican? Yes, I am. Okay. You have a lot of Latino constituents? Yes. Okay. So water issues, um, uh, uh, pay issues are important, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, longevity of the job, uh, perhaps immigration. So how do, uh, how do we go about affecting the change that we need to, to change? Well, what you need to do in, in Tallahassee is the same thing I did as a mayor of the city of the Bowery. When you look at a budget, okay, you look at needs versus wants. Okay. A lot of times what happens is in Washington and uh, Tallahassee is that they look at the wants versus the needs of the people. A lot of the needs that we have in, in Florida right now is to move the middle class, to give the middle class value again. Right. It's been deteriorating for the last 20 years. A good example is pay. Let me give you an example there. Even if we raise the minimum wage at, say, less $10 an hour, okay. okay, you can do it in increments, but let's say $10 an hour, 
okay? 40 hour week, that's $400. Four weeks in a month, that's $1,600. If the average rent in Florida for any basic home is around 800, right. that leads to $800 left over for, for food, right. electric, telephone, gas. How can a person afford to turn around and buy health insurance? Right. You're right. So the issues before me right now are more related to Floridians and the people themselves. We need to realize that we, the taxpayer is the one that's flicking the bill. Right. They should be the first priority. One of the things that we do in this country, we find it very easy to find money for every Tom, Dick, and Harry outside the United States, but we're not investing in our own people and in our own country. That's where our problem is. We have about uh, a minute left. What do you want the people to know and how do we get them to get out and vote? The only way that you're going to ensure a brighter future for you, your children, is that if you go out and vote. With voting, you have power because that opens up eyes to elected officials to say, listen, we got people out there, we have to pay attention to their needs. You have to go out November 4th and vote. Your vote is so crucial, not only for now, but for the future. I want to thank you for ha taking that time out to talk to me. We have to have you back, no matter what happens. Oh, to, it's okay, an honor, anytime. Wish you a lot of luck. Uh, I'm Jose Miranda. This is Hispanic Speak Out to the next Florida House Representative, District 27. We'll be right back. Get ready for Latina, like it or not. So that was not the first affair. There was three more. Saw that I went after her and I beat her up where she got into the car and wouldn't come out. Are you naked? Yeah. You know, getting all sexy and, you know, getting my groove on. He actually got the fist and just popped me in the face. So tune in every Tuesday. We're going to be here bringing it like it is from 10 to 10.30. We're in hard times and some of us are going to need a lawyer. And if you need a lawyer, don't just react to a TV commercial. Get a copy of the Lawyer's Consumer Directory, which is available absolutely free of charge at any 7-Eleven store throughout Central Florida. The Lawyer's Consumer Directory is going to give you real hardcore knowledge on how to hire a lawyer and a lot of information on issues like bankruptcy, foreclosure, and more. Get the Lawyer's Consumer Directory. It's absolutely free of charge at any 7-Eleven throughout Central Florida. Hi, I'm Jose Miranda. This is Hispanic Speak Out. Tonight we're speaking with Dolores Guzman, and she is an advocate in the neighbor, a neighborhood, in the community, and she has something she wants our listeners to know. Mi querido pueblo latino, quiero hablarles de lo más profundo de mi corazón. Muchos políticos dicen que este no es nuestro país, que nos debemos regresar de donde vinimos. Sin embargo, de la única manera que nos podemos hacer valer, respetar y contar es con nuestro voto. Tenemos que demostrarles a los políticos de esta nación que la comunidad hispana dirá presente en las elecciones 2014. Estas elecciones son muy importantes porque nuestras vidas diarias dependen de las leyes que nuestros políticos electos ejercen a diarios en nuestras ciudades, condados y estados. Te invito a que como parte del sueño americano al que aspiramos todos es que votes en las elecciones primarias en agosto 26 y en las elecciones generales en noviembre 4. Si no estás inscrito para votar, visita tu oficina más cercana de elecciones, de supervisor de elecciones, tu oficina de tu partido preferido o tu biblioteca local. Para ejercer un voto inteligente, conoce a tus candidatos locales ellos son los portavoces en tu ciudad y tu condado. Inscríbete a Latino, infórmate mi gente y vota, es tu derecho. Mi nombre es Dolores Guzmán, activista latina. Si me necesitas mi ayuda, llama al 407-314-4007. What else can Gracias. I tell you, folks? This is Hispanic Speak Out. She has the last word.